SNY's Ian Begley's headline on his most recent article in SNY.TV reads, temperature on Tom Thibodeau's seat heating up after Sunday's alarming Knicks loss. So let's bring in Ian now, because we're going to break down this article in <sighs> hot seat. The topic of Tibbs being on the hot seat is warming up on social media. The Knicks are 6-7. and seven. They gave up 145 points in the loss to the Thunder. Is Coach Tom Thibodeau's seat getting a little warmer at this point? It is, Brandon, and you're a football guy, so let me put it this way. An NFL coach known for his defensive acumen gives up 49 points. Team is not playing to its capabilities. That coach would be on the hot seat. But for me, with Thibodeau, it's more than just Sunday, right? Because you look back at last season, Leon Rose, to his credit, stuck by Tom Thibodeau when Thibodeau's job security was in question, when the Knicks were struggling. Now, you come into this season, you add Jalen Brunson to do that. You shed some salary. You use some draft capital to shed the salary to add Brunson. And I think the general expectation is with this group, the team's going to be competitive. Some of the young players are going to take steps forward. And you're going to have more often than not nights where you're scrapping, you're fighting, you're defending, you're in games, and you're maybe around 500 at the end of the season. So that's why nights like, or excuse me, days like Sundays are troubling for Tom Thibodeau because the group was not showing that competitiveness, was not tied on a string together on defense. And you go back to the Atlanta loss when the Knicks were up 23 and ended up getting blown out. The Boston loss where the Celtics come out and shoot the lights out in the garden. The Nets loss where the Nets were reeling. Uh, surrounded by a lot of uncertainty and come out and drub the Knicks at the Barclays Center. These are the kind of losses that I think are going to get Tom Thibodeau's in trouble, Tom Thibodeau in trouble. And that's why I think the temperature is rising a bit on Tibbs right now. Knicks heading to the West Coast five game trip. If they're competitive, if they win maybe two of the games, but they're competitive in the losses, I think he could be fine. But uh, more of these games where they're just non-competitive and the Knicks fan is left scratching his or her head, uh, those are not good for Thibodeau's job security. Well, even Tibbs acknowledged that the defense was the problem, saying, quote, defense was the problem. I mean, like you said, he's known to be a defensive coach. Is it the players? Is it the schemes? Like, who needs to step up on defense for this team to string together some much-needed wins? Well, Brandon, let's be fair for a second to the head coach because Mitchell Robinson has been out for five games, and, and Robinson – uh, a very, very strong defender. The Nick defense kind of goes as Robinson goes. He's back there as a safety valve, protecting the paint, protecting the rim. He's not been out. Uh, he's been out, pardon me. And then you've got Quentin Grimes, who's a, a strong, young perimeter defender. Grimes has basically been unavailable for the whole season. You know, he's been in and out with left foot soreness. He's not able to play rotation minutes right now as he continues to work on his conditioning, getting all the way back. So you have two of their plus defenders who are unavailable. Uh, but nonetheless, not, uh, games like Sundays, uh, they shouldn't happen, regardless of who's on the court, because that Thunder team was 28th, 29th, I think, in three-point field goal percentage entering Sunday. And they come out and they light the Knicks up. So who needs to step up? Uh, to me, it's the perimeter defenders. You know, it's, it's Jalen Brunson as a defender. It's R.J. Barrett as a defender. Cam Reddish has done a nice job. It's Julius Randle. As a defender, you know, it, it's everybody who's not, not known as a plus defender on that roster giving more and then the team defense being stronger because you cannot continue to have games like Sundays and expect this season to go in a positive direction. Another thing that Knicks fans are keeping an eye on that uh, you have reported over the weekend that the Knicks are receiving calls about a possible trades for Emmanuel quickly. Like, do you see them moving him? And if so, what? What would you get or what should they get in return? Yeah, I would expect that the conversations will continue, right? Like, I don't think the Knicks are going to be hanging up the phone. I think they'll continue to have dialogue. You know, as you get closer to December 15th, the conversations become more real because at that point, uh, t uh, players that were signed as free agents, most of them are trade eligible. And then obviously they just continue to get more intense as you approach the trade deadline. So I would expect those conversations to continue as far as uh, what they would get back. I mean, I don't know. I think if, if I was, uh, if I was that smart, I'd, I'd be a GM and uh, not a reporter, but I would assume you could get a first back for quickly or, or maybe a, you know, an established rotation player for quickly. Um, well, we'll see. I mean, it, I, I also, there's no guarantee that they're going to trade them. These are just conversations right now. 
But it was just interesting to note that even at this point in the season, early on, those conversations are being had. We like you better as a reporter. If you were a GM, we wouldn't get the inside scoop, Bags. Appreciate you joining <laughs> us. <laughs>